my body is forever damaged from training jujitsu. I started training 10 years ago. I'm a purple belt. If you know anything about jujitsu, the belt ranking system is white, blue, purple, brown, black for adults. And then they have belts beyond black, but your last name pretty much has to be Gracie if you want a red belt or a red and white belt. I originally got curious about jujitsu, probably like many people do through the Joe Rogan podcast. What's the practical use of jujitsu? Well, if you and I were in a fight, that I would kill you. He used to talk about it a bunch and I listened and that kind of planted that first seed for me. I was 27 or 28 when I first started. It was right around the time when I started working at the Spearmint Rhino and I was parking cars there. I wasn't dancing. I remember I was doing P90X and one of the guys that worked there was a boxer, like legit boxer. Dude was sparring partners for some big names. He saw me eating clean. I had my little lunch packed. I was the new guy, the new valet attendant outside. And you know, everybody likes to bust your balls. Are you breaking my balls? I, I think about it. I remember him calling me a pretty boy saying like, why, why are you trying to get in shape? You trying to get a six pack? He's like, do you know how to fight? And I'm like, yeah, I know how to fight. I felt like I did know how to fight a little bit. When I was much younger, like 15 years old, I, I trained in boxing for a summer, hitting mitts and the bags and sparring a little bit. So I felt like I could handle myself and I grew up fighting, you know, the typical, oh yeah, man, I've, I've got plenty of street fights under my belt response that I gave him. He hit the coach and said he had like 200 street fights and like he's not a lot of guys up. And and he kind of chuckled and he was like, you should come down to the boxing gym sometime. And I did. And I showed up at his boxing gym. I remember my first day training with him. He kind of like Mr. Miyagi'd me and he was having me do stuff that wasn't really boxing. He was telling me that a lot of it would play into it. Things like hitting a tire with a sledgehammer, but not just hitting the tire with a sledgehammer, but turning your hips in the way that you would when you're throwing a punch as you're hitting the tire with the sledgehammer to help you get power. The energy travels up the leg, twists through the hips, and into the large muscles of the back, chest, and shoulders. Sorry, getting into the weeds of things, but he Mr. miyagi me a bit, and I trained with him for, gosh, I think it was like nearly nine to 10 months. I was 28 years old, I was in the best shape of my life, cardio was insane, and I felt like hot shit. How could I not? Then my buddy Paco came over to my house, and at the time, he had been training jujitsu. He was a one-stripe white belt, for people who don't understand jujitsu ranks. He was basically training for like three to six months at that point, and he was fairly consistent, but a lot of times you'll hear people joke around saying like your first stripe means that you learned how to tie your belt. He was about 135 pounds and 5'6". He's not a big guy. And I at the time was 185 pounds and 6'1", which gave me a bit of a size advantage on him. And there at my house in front of my soon to be wife, my buddy Paco chokes me out multiple times on my living room floor. That's when I was just like, oh man, I have no idea how to fight. If it was a boxing match, yeah, I'm pretty sure I would have won because I was training boxing at that point, but I've never grappled in my life. I, mean, I didn't grow up wrestling. I never trained judo. I never did any of that stuff. And jujitsu was just something that I had heard Joe Rogan talk about a lot on his podcast. So I thought it was pretty cool that Paco was training it, but I wanted to put it to the test. And I quickly found out that, yeah, that stuff works. And Paco choked me out a bunch of times in front of my wife. I'm glad that she still decided to marry me after watching me get choked out by my tiny friend. But that's when I decided I'm going to do it. The funny thing is on the way to my boxing gym, I would drive by this sign that said jujitsu every single day I went to the gym. And mind you, I was going to the gym like five times a week to train boxing and just seeing that jujitsu sign, knowing nothing about it more than just what I've heard from Joe Rogan and from what my buddy Paco was telling me. I didn't research it much, which is strange for me because I am the type of person who researches everything and then I get caught up procrastinating and in, in that weird. I've done a lot of research on this topic, so much so that I feel like I don't even want to do it anymore. And I do that with a lot of things, but I didn't do that with jujitsu. I was just genuinely curious and thought that the best way to learn more about it was to try it and not research it too much. Because you end up watching fight videos and jujitsu street fights, and then you go down a rabbit hole, and pretty soon you're seeing some old fat Russian guy doing sistema, throwing people across the room by just touching them on their neck with one finger, which is obviously bullshit. So I finally decide to stop at that jujitsu gym. And I remember the first time training and getting beat up by young children. There was a kid there, he was a green belt, which is like the highest rank you get when you're under 16 years old. And the kid was legit, just insane 
insanely good and he was like 13 or 14 years old. He manhandled me. A couple of the blue belt girls that were there kicked my ass. I remember coming out of that class so exhausted and feeling like I had to throw up because my cardio was put to the ultimate test. Mind you, at this point, I thought my cardio was the best it has ever been, but it wasn't grappling cardio. It's different. When you're grappling, when you're doing jiu-jitsu, when you're wrestling, it uses your entire body and it uses parts of your body that aren't used unless you're really grappling or doing exercises to improve those strengths that are around grappling. And I was hooked. At that point, I stopped going to the boxing gym. I signed up for the jiu-jitsu gym and I was obsessed. It became a thing that I did every single day, sometimes twice a day. Mind you, at this time, I, I had a job that was super chill. I worked graveyard and I only worked like three or four days a week and made decent money. And then I had my mornings and afternoons pretty much completely open. I had no kids, no real responsibilities. So I had plenty of time to train. And I did. And I quickly advanced. I went from a white belt to a blue belt in about 13 months, which the average blue belt takes about two years or so to get. So I definitely got my blue belt quick by most standards. I competed about three or four times as a white belt. I might have competed almost five times. I don't, I don't remember. I got first place in my first tournament at Naga, Nogi. I, I felt great. It was awesome. I was never an athlete. This is the first time I got a medal put around my neck. I stood on a podium and I beat people fair and square with my ability. And it felt awesome. And I, I kept going and I didn't stop until my first serious injury at Blue Belt. When I got my Blue Belt, I was hesitant to compete right away because I felt that I wasn't ready. I felt that I needed to build up a little bit more to be prepared for that first Blue Belt tournament. I really hyped myself up and, and I waited and I, I kept training and I trained hard and it was about four or five months where Masters Worlds was coming up in Vegas. And, and Masters is the older guys. Younger guys are adults, and then they have kids in tournaments for jiu-jitsu. And then you have Masters, Masters 1, 2, 3, 4. So Masters World is like this big tournament for all the old guys. And that was my first blue belt tournament. And I got absolutely demolished, just wrecked. I remember someone telling me that they overheard that guy had already been training for a bunch of time and he was a blue belt for like four years and I was a blue belt for four months. I get destroyed and not only does my ego get hurt, but I hurt my knee. And this is one of the first times that I, I experienced a serious injury. I didn't have insurance at the time, so I didn't go and get an MRI because it was just going to be too much money for me to pay for that. I decided to still go to the doctor and they gave me a rough idea of what they thought was wrong with it. And it seemed like a light MCL tear. When I would walk, it felt like my knee was giving out. I couldn't walk or jog for a while. So then this was my first time off from jujitsu. During the time I was recovering, my gym kind of had a falling out and it fell apart. The black belts that taught most of the classes went and started their own gym. And through the middle of all that, I was trying to get back in the training. At the time, Vinny Magalhães had been teaching at Syndicate MMA, which was not too far from my house. It was about a 15 minute drive. And and I decided that I wanted to go train with him. He's ADCC champion, super well-known jiu-jitsu practitioner, legit world champ jiu-jitsu guy. And he was also at like the peak of his MMA career at that point. So I thought it'd be cool to go train with him. And I did. I think I trained with him for nine months or so. But again, as it goes with fight gyms, there was drama at Syndicate MMA. And Vinny decided to split off. And he was kind of in between gyms. So a lot of the people that trained with him started following him around. And I was one of those. He was at the small karate gym at one point. Then he moved to like this boxing gym that had some mats. We were just kind of gypsying around to, to find places to train when we were training with Vinny, which was kind of cool because there was like less than 10 of us getting instruction from one of the best jujitsu guys at the time. I got to roll with him and I, and I got to train with him and, and he was a good coach. He had a lot going on with his fight career. So sometimes he wouldn't be there and his black belts would teach or some of the other students would teach. But overall, learning with him was a good experience. And, and then around that time, the first baby came around. I remember being at jujitsu when my wife went into labor. She called me and she's like, I'm in labor. And you know, everyone tells you that, oh, when you think you're going into labor, you're really not. And it's like a lot of false alarms. And I was like, okay, no worries. 
I'll be home. I left class and I went home, but I, I always like to shower after jujitsu. Mats can be dirty sometimes, especially at MMA gyms. For some reason, MMA guys aren't as clean on the mats as jujitsu guys are, and there tends to be more shit that goes around, like ringworm and staph infections and skin diseases. So I always showered after I got out of jujitsu and I had to shower before I took my wife to the hospital <laughs> when she was going into labor. And, and there's still a joke that her and I say, because I have this weird obsession that when I get out of the shower, I have to clean my ears. I don't like water in my ears. And so till this day, when we're in a hurry, she's like, hey, make sure you don't clean your ears. We got to get out of here. And then I took a lot of time off. I got fat. I got out of shape. I jumped up to almost like 220, 230. My wife loves to bake. And when she was pregnant, she would just bake cookies all the time. So she would bake like two dozen cookies. She would eat two and I would eat 22. <laughs> and then that's how I gained a lot of my extra weight. And jujitsu wasn't a top priority anymore. But it was something I always wanted to go back to because I really enjoyed doing it. After my firstborn got a little older, I was able to go back to the gym. And then we ended up having a second baby. So then I took time off and then eventually went back to the gym. And that same cycle of like gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight, leaving jiu-jitsu, going back to jiu-jitsu. And that like just kept happening. But I kept training. I never really completely stopped training, but I hurt more. And I wasn't young anymore. And when we moved out of Vegas and came to Washington, got back into the gym, I, I got back in the training and I was feeling good. And then COVID happened and everything shut down. My gym in particular here in Washington shut down. When they reopened, it shut down again like a month later. And I kind of just said, I'm taking a break for a while. At this point, I had good health insurance. And after about a year off of jujitsu, I finally decided to get my knee surgery. And the surgery kicked my ass. I had a bucket tear in my meniscus. It didn't have anything to do with my MCL that I had hurt years before. That seemed to have healed up pretty well on its own. But the bucket tear on my meniscus was a problem that I just constantly had and it showed up a lot in jiu-jitsu. I remember very early on when I was a white belt we were drilling triangle chokes and my knee got jammed and I had to kind of like move it around so that it would unstick itself. It, it sucked and then that would happen frequently. I would say often, maybe maybe not frequently, but sometimes it would happen and I'm able to like adjust my knee and it would feel okay and then sometimes it would just get completely stuck and I would have to extend it and then like grit through the pain. I remember that happened a couple times in, in those cases, I'd be in pain for like a week, two weeks, uh, and just kind of like this lingering achy pain in my knee. Finally, I decided to get that fixed because I had taken a bunch of time off and it just seemed like a good time to do it given the fact that COVID was still happening and, and we were kind of in a weird spot because we had moved up to where my brother-in-law's house was and, and there wasn't really any jujitsu gyms nearby and I just decided like, it's okay, I'll, I'll take a break and I'll come back to it. Fast forward a year and a half later and I'm traveling Europe and I decide that now is probably a good time to start training jujitsu again, which is ridiculous because because if you train jujitsu and you know what it's like to go visit gyms, it's a crapshoot sometimes. And you can sometimes go to a gym where everybody is super cool and welcoming and inviting. And sometimes you can go to a gym where they see you and you're like fresh meat. You can imagine me, overweight, a little out of shape, coming in with a brand new gi and a brand new purple belt that I bought while I was traveling because I didn't originally pack this stuff with me on my trip to Europe, showing up at a small grimy, hot gym in Spain, in Malaga. Luckily for me, I speak Spanish, so I was able to at least communicate with the people there, kind of tell them, hey, you know, we're traveling, I haven't trained in a few years, I had knee surgery, I'm out of shape, and I'm pretty sure most of the people there probably did not think I was a legit purple belt. And I consider myself a legit purple belt. I earned my purple belt. This was not given to me. I got my purple belt from a Ricardo Cavacanti black belt, who is a Carlson Gracie black belt. And I have legit lineage behind my blue and purple belt. So I consider myself a good purple belt. I know what I'm doing, but when you're fat and out of shape and haven't trained in two years, your purple belt doesn't mean shit. And you're pretty much like a really good white belt or a mediocre blue belt at that point. And it takes a little while to get back into shape of grappling. But I decided to start training again while I was traveling. And I continued to train during our travels. I trained in Barcelona. I trained in 
Portugal. Unfortunately, didn't train in London and I really wanted to go to Carlson Gracie London, but I was too far and it just didn't work out. But I trained throughout my travels and when we settled down in Portugal for like that month and a half before we came back to the US, I was back at it like two, three times a week. I got my kids in it, which is something I've always wanted to do. And I was back. And now fast forward like six months, here I am back in the US feeling great. I've been training since I've got back. Pretty much one of the first things I did when we got back from our trip was go right back to my old gym and sign up. And that was about four or five months ago. It's the most consistent I have been since pre-COVID, I would say. And I'm beat, man. I'm going to be 39 years old in a few months. At this point, my knees hurt all the time. Neck pain, which I ended up getting x-rayed at one point and I had some degeneration in the, a couple discs in my neck. My back hurts, broken, dislocated fingers and toes. My fingers hurt because I train a lot of gi. There's a lot of grip breaking, very similar to judo. You're grabbing collars, you're grabbing sleeves, and it's very bad on your fingers. A lot of old school jujitsu guys who trained a lot of gi have arthritis in their fingers. My elbows are screwed up from being arm barred too many times. Well, one more injury that I forgot about was my chest. I was born with a birth defect where I have kind of a concave chest. And one time when I was training, I was training with a much bigger guy who's probably closer to 300 pounds and he's a black belt now but at the time I think he was a brown belt and I was just about to get my purple belt at that time but we were training takedowns and I don't remember the exact toss that he caught me with but it was some kind of judo throw hip toss and he landed on me in side control but when I landed I was kind of on my side like that and he kind of landed on me which caused my chest and my sternum to go like that and I felt it like right down the crack, the parts of your ribs that connect. And it was the worst pain I had ever felt in my life. And to this day, this happened years ago, I can't sleep on my side. My wife makes fun of me because I sleep like Dracula. You know, I sleep like this straight because if I don't sleep straight, I wake up with a hurt neck or a hurt back or a hurt chest. Because if I sleep in the fetal position or on my side, I mean, it is such an excruciating pain that it wakes me up. And then I get up and I have to like stretch and it hurts. And I've gone to the doctor for, it. It's been x-rayed. It's cartilage damage from what they assume I have not gotten an MRI because my doctor was pretty much like, hey man, it's kind of like a rib injury. When it rains or when it's about to rain or it gets a little cold out, everything in my body starts hurting. And now a couple days ago, I, I told my wife, I was like, I don't know if I can keep doing this. It's like this thing that I love so much would say saved my life, even though it's this corny ass saying that a lot of people used to say and they put it on t-shirts that it was like jujitsu saved my life. Unless you are in the middle of a fight where someone is about to kill you and you use jujitsu to save your life, Jiu-jitsu doesn't save your life, but for me at least, it helped a lost 28 year old who never really stuck with anything and never had much ambition and drive. It helped me find that in me. And in a weird way, I feel like I owe a lot of my success to the fact that I started training jujitsu because there's something about going in and just getting beat up day in and day out and sticking with it and not seeing a lot of progress for a while. Through that, it showed me that if I continued doing something, no matter how hard it was, and I stuck with it, that I would eventually get better at it and that I could actually get good at it. And I felt that I was good at jujitsu. I still feel that I'm decent. As I get older, it gets harder. And now I train with some young guys and I'm, I can't even keep up with them. It's tough. It is a combat sport that you can't really fake the funk on. What led me to wanting to make this video was that a lot of people have asked about it because I've mentioned jujitsu throughout a lot of my videos. And I've, you know, gave a lot of credit to jujitsu for helping me get to where I'm at. While I do credit jujitsu for quote unquote, saving my life and giving me some direction when I was a lost 20 something year old and helping me understand what I know now from having grit and sticking it out when things get tough. And that helped me learn how to code, helped me with my YouTube channel. It helped me with a lot of things, just so many aspects of my life that I apply that same mentality to. At this point, although it helped save my life, it's destroyed my body. And as I approach that big 4-0, as I approach that over the hill mark, 
I feel like I don't know if I can keep going, but I'm still still doing it. I'm just one serious injury left in me before I decide to call it quits. I'm scared, man. I get anxious when I go to the gym, not because I'm going to get beat up. I've been getting beat up for the last 10 years and I'm going to continue getting beat up as long as I continue going. I don't care about that. I don't have much ego. I put up good fights, but I like to train with good technique. I don't roll soft, but I'm also not an asshole on the mats. But I'm at the point where I do feel that it's a game of Russian roulette at this point. And it's only a matter of time before I step on those mats one day and my knee gives out again, or I dislocate something. And at this point in time, I don't feel like I want to continue putting myself through that. It does feel like my time is almost up. It does feel like I don't have that much left in me. I think it's one of those things that will always have a place in my heart and is a part of my life and was a part of my life for a long time. But I feel that it has given me enough that if I did part ways with it and stop training today, I feel that the impact that it had on my life will carry on through everything I do. And that's it. That's my jujitsu video. I don't know if anyone will get value from this. I don't even know why I made this video because people ask for it. And it is something that I enjoy doing. And it is something that I've done for a while. And it is one of those things that I can talk about forever. I don't know. I guess if, if you guys want to see more videos on jiu-jitsu. I'm happy to talk about it, but I feel like I pretty much said everything I had to say in this video about my jiu-jitsu journey and how it saved my life, but has destroyed my body in the process. All right. With that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.